Barry Sperluga. He is covering the Olympics. He was at the event covering for the Washington Post and kind enough to join us on short notice. What was it like when uh, you saw her walk off, Barry? I mean, a little staggering. I mean, at first, of course, you think, well, she twisted an ankle or she's getting a knee treated and, and can she go on and what's her physical state? And, um, and then, you know, word kind of spreads around that it wasn't, in fact, an injury that um, she's making a decision based on mental health. And I, I got to say, Dan, like, you know, this is something that's come up in the lead up to these Olympics. It's come up uh, at these Olympics. Um, Simone Manuel, a, a swimmer, talked about it at trials. She was a gold medalist in 2016 and didn't even make the team here in that event. It is Naomi Osaka's story here. Um, so if you put it in the context of these athletes, you know, they only are relevant to mainstream American sports fans once every four years. You add a fifth year onto that, Files is trying to cement her place as the unquestioned, you know, all time great in her sport. Um, I think you're right. You, you heard it in her voice. There is a toll of all of that. And do we have answers to everything yet? And, and like the individual events, like it, it just feels like there's a, there's a great mystery still to be solved here, Barry. Oh, for sure. And, and she addressed that the, the all around competition for individuals is on uh, Thursday. And of course she, she won that in Rio. She's the huge, enormous favorite here. Um, but she said tonight, she's, she's taking it day by day. They're going to have, a morning off with no practice tomorrow. She sounds like a woman who needs a morning off with no practice tomorrow. Um, she's going to clear her head. Um, and, you know, this opens up all sorts of stuff where, you know, what if she competes for the all around gold as an individual on, on Thursday night? Did she give up on her team in essentially doing those same things um, on, on a Tuesday night? Um, it'll be really fascinating to see, really interesting to hear what the reactions are from other athletes. Um, but I think what we're looking at is, is a changing athlete, a changing viewpoint of, of what these people endure in, you know, being in the spotlight and then training and going through the grind of it out of the spotlight, um, they're being much more frank about, about how that affects them. And you start to understand the enormity of this, that yes, it's pushed an extra year. And NBC and Peacock have leaned on her and Katie Ledecky to really be, there's no Usain Bolt, there's no Michael Phelps, that uh, they're leaning on these two athletes to carry the next two weeks. And I don't know what that pressure would be like, the enormity, I can only imagine that. And you're supposed to win gold. You know, covering the Olympics, the beauty is a 17-year-old from Alaska who wins a gold, and that's the great story of the Olympics. Simone Biles wins gold, or a few golds, be like, okay, we expected her to. And, and I think you could almost, you could hear that pressure. And, that, and boy, that says a lot about what she must be under right now. And that's, that's the dichotomy of it, right? Like the 17-year-old Lydia Jacoby from Alaska, like, no one, if she had won bronze, we wouldn't be talking about her. She would be enormously satisfied. Her hometown would be thrilled. Yeah. Um, but it's an extra layer because she came out of nowhere. She, she won that gold. And she didn't have to think about the stuff that Simone Biles thought about, not just this morning when she was getting up to compete, but when she was flying over here and a year ago when the games were postponed and when she was evaluating, does she want to continue? And should she just retire? Um, those are real pressures. And people can say like, well, she gets the spoils too. She gets the endorsements and she's going to make millions of dollars. And, and that's all true. But I think we should be mature enough and, and developed enough to acknowledge that, you know, millions of dollars don't instantly make your head right. Um, so it really was an amazing sight to see her walk off come back and, and legitimately root on her um, teammates, but also say on this day, given my mental state, I would have been a hindrance to the U.S. winning a medal, not a help. Well, there's collateral damage. I mean, Michael Phelps talked about this. Yeah. Looked like he had everything. And then you realize that he understood that he, he was damaged in some way. 
And that's the greatest Olympian that we've ever seen, that, that enormity. And he's the one, I think, who was ahead of the curve on this stuff. He dealt with it in the middle of his career and kind of pulled himself back to get to Rio and, and win more. Um, so if somebody who has won 23 gold medals more than anybody in history is saying, you got to listen to these athletes and, and telling athletes, you have to tend to yourselves. Um, I think that's really important. And I would say too, and this is such, this is why it's such a layered discussion. It's like you, you have to acknowledge that being a champion athlete takes some measure of mental strength. And we, we can't just say all of a sudden, okay, we've, the standards are completely different, you know, but there is, what is fighting through that and persevering and what is tending to yourself? So you don't break down. I, I think that's over the next three years to the next summer games. That's, that's probably the discussion that needs to happen, not just around athletes, but, but with athletes. Barry, thanks for joining us. We appreciate your time. Thanks a lot, Dan. Barry Sverluga, he is uh, covering the Olympics, joining us from Tokyo for the uh, Washington Post.